Elizabeth, can you begin by just giving us a quick outline of what, about what exactly the He for She initiative aims to do? And then we'll come in and, and pester Bob about how exactly you put it into practice, and you as well. But do you want to start? Yes, thank you very much. He for She is a solutions-driven movement. In 2014, we came to a realization that we needed to do more than talk about gender inequality and really look at how do we start to create these societies of equality. And the first thing we did was to shift this perception that gender equality is a woman's issue. It isn't. It's a societal issue, but it's also a men's issue. So the first thing that we did was recognize the role that men can play in being supporters of such a movement. And we were very fortunate to create a very structural and systematic initiative called the Impact Initiative that created an ecosystem for change. So we engaged 10 heads of states, we engaged 10 global CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, including uh, PwC. We also engaged university presidents to look at how can they collectively create tangible and replicable solutions for gender equality. That's what the movement is about. We've got to move beyond rhetoric to actually looking at how do we create solutions so that we can accelerate progress we actually are moving backwards when it comes to gender equality right now. Is there a particular tangible thing you'd like to highlight to this audience as something that you, you particularly look to? Yes, absolutely. Again, it was recognizing that, as you rightly pointed out, you know, we live in a society where men um, are half of the world's population, but they do hold the majority of the power. But we also knew that it wasn't going to be an antagonistic type of way of engaging men, uh, that we are in it together. It's an inclusive movement. And so we look to how we can empower those men in positions of power, like Bob, to identify concrete game-changing commitments and things that they can do to close the gap. From the equal pay gap to making sure there's you know, equal representation of women in senior leadership across the board, et cetera. So it's really about creating the systematic and structural change and shifting the culture within those companies. Bob, do you want to come in and say, give an example of what you've done at PwC that fits into this. So when you step back and look at what Elizabeth just described, and she deserves all the credit for how this has been organized, we at PwC signed up for three commitments. The three commitments was first, to make sure that we actually tell our story. We're a human capital organization, so we wanted to tell our story to the world in terms of our journey. There's a lot of learnings, a lot of failures along the way, and we wanted to accelerate that by sharing that very transparently. The second thing we wanted to do was actually put in place a, a global initiative that is free to the world in terms of increasing, increasing your gender IQ in an organization. So allow for some tools and techniques to be used at a location, business, academic, country, to actually get the male side of the equation, as well as the overall organizations, and get their IQ up so they're better understanding the realities of what's happening in their workplace, their communities, and or their governments or academic entities. And then third is the initiative that we took on, which was specifically how do we get our men more engaged in the initiatives that we're looking for, which basically became the starting point for us was prior to the He for She initiative, which is where we launched something called White Men for Women, right? So white men as sponsors. We needed to focus specifically on how do we take words to actions and how do we engage our leadership, and that being then cascaded down, to really get our men across the entire organization to really truly understand what sponsorship is, activate it, and then get better results as we went through the exercise.